everyone welcome back to another video my name is Casey and this is my floss tube where I talk about cross stitching and this is my cat Petri um, whoops watch out <laughs> ow don't bite me if you're returning thanks for coming back and if you're new um, welcome <laughs> my last video was almost two months ago and that was where I did my whip parade so there's going to be a, quite a bit to show you guys because I still have a lot of the things I bought around Christmas time and stuff to show you guys. So we'll just get right into it. We're going to go over my whips, which are works in progress. And I'll show you where I was before. So that's going to be almost two months of progress is what you'll be seeing. And I'll show you the cover photos. There's no particular order in what I'm going to show you guys. But... Let's get started. I'm sorry if, he bo if he's bothering you. <laughs> um, the first one I'm going to show you is called Evening. It's from Heaven and Earth Designs. It's Max Color and it's by Leonid Afrimov. I've restarted this one. This is my, I believe, my third time restarting it. And finally, found a fabric that I like. So this is on 22 count. I'll show you what it was before and this is where it is now. In my previous videos I used to show you guys, like tell you guys the statistics and stuff but I've decided not to do that anymore because I have like a stitching journal that I'm using now where I track my monthly progress. But I don't record monthly every single time. So I just feel like that can get confusing. But the video that was two months of progress. And then I'm tracking in my journal like a month of progress. So when I get to like big milestones and stuff. I'll show you or I'll tell you about the percent from Pattern, Ke Pattern Keeper and stuff like that. But this is on 22 count. Two over two. I don't know if I said that. And since Patreon's in my way. I'm going to have to like toss things over him. Or... I'll just use this chair right here. The next one is called San Francisco Golden Gate by, and it's from artisy.com. And this is where it is. So, oops, sorry. San Francisco is one of my favorite cities in California. So that's why I wanted to do this pattern. And yeah, I believe this is on 18 count. <laughs> um, I'm sorry if you hear background noises. I now have my other cat on the table. The next is called Tranquil Tulip. It's a quick stitch by Hannah Disney on Heaven and Earth Designs. And uh, this is the way it goes. And just a few days ago, I worked on the flower, so this is where it progress is. I don't iron until it's actually complete, and I tape the edges, so I'm sorry if those two things bother you. But I started this one just because I had this fabric already, and it's 14 count. So I was like, let's see if I can find something that fits, and I found something. Next is called Joshua Tree National Park by Awesome Pattern Studio on Etsy. If you don't know where this is, it's in Southern California. It's only like an hour from where I live, so that's the reason I wanted to do this one. I've been there once only, <laughs> but I went camping there and stuff, so that was fun. And I think I got decent progress like on this area pretty much this one is called Mary and Bright by Donna Gelsinger from Heaven and Earth Designs it's 28 count 1 over 1 I didn't do a whole lot on it but I think it's still noticeable mostly I just filled in on the wall over here but 
This one is very slow progress that you're able to see. You can't tell this part is a wreath. Also, if you watched my whip parade and I talked about goals, um, I had mentioned doing whip parade, or not whip parade, whip go this year. But as soon as like the numbers were called and stuff, I didn't feel like doing it, so I decided not to. If you don't know what whip go is, it's from, what's her name? <laughs> uh, Jessie Marie does stuff on YouTube. Oh, don't stop it. The next one that I have is called Epic Pokemon by LordLibadon.com. This one is for my fiance. Let me get these cats off my projects. <sighs> this is Autumn. She's our youngest child. Um, I'm she like she's a daddy's girl, so she doesn't want me to hold her. She bye. <laughs> Now get out of here. Patrick, get off of my stuff too. This one is called Epic Pokemon by LordLibadon.com. And this pattern I'm doing for my fiance. And I got good progress on this. I made it all the way across, so this is how long it is. In width, at least. And before, I literally just had like this corner, pretty sure. And if you've been watching my videos, or if you're new and you don't know, um, I decided to create the challenge for myself to be able to name all the Pokemon as I complete them. And I got like at least four more new ones since you've last seen this, so I figured I'd try to name them for you guys. <laughs> so let's see how I let's see how I hold this. <laughs> um. All right, we're just gonna get close. This one is, um, hold on. <laughs> okay, now I'm ready. This one is called Zapdos. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's hard to do this backwards. All right, let me start over. This is Zapdos, Moltres, Flareon, Porygon, Pinsir, Omonite, Omastar, Dratini, Dragonair, Dragonite, um, Mew, the pink one is Mew, and this one is Mew too. I think I'm correct. But yeah, it's supposed to be long, so that's going to get harder as we get more finished, but hopefully it will stick in my head. <laughs> Alright, I'll say one more thing about this. I don't know how many of you or if any of you work on this pattern, but I've had a couple issues with the colors. First off, I thought Flareon was too red by just a... Like, I'm okay with it. I moved past it and stuff. And then I wanted to work all the way over. I worked all the way over to Mewtwo. And I found out those colors that originally they had were not accurate, in my opinion. And it was really bothering me. So I started to, like, search on Facebook. Other people had the issue. And I was able to find some suggestions to change the colors. I ended up just looking through what I had and picking what I thought was correct. Um... So yeah, I did change the colors on Mewtwo, the pink one. And then the yellow one, which is Dragonair, I believe. Um, let me show you. If you see like this, there's yellow, and then there's a darker yellow. This one seemed really green in the original color, just really dark compared to the yellow. And it bothered me, so I switched it, and it's kind of confusing, because <laughs> then you have to go and switch find out where that color is everywhere else on him and change it as well but I made a note of it in my phone in case whenever a different Pokemon has their original color if it bothers me I'll know which one I can use or if you guys have questions and you want to know what colors I used you can just ask me and I'll let you know the 
the next one is called Winter Lane by Cross Stitch Collectibles. This one, this is where it is now, and I'll show you where it was before. Not a whole lot to say about this one. It's kind of hard to see with my lighting and stuff. So it's the top of it, I mean, the whole project is a lot of white on white. But it's just a snow scene, and I like snow, so that's why I did this one. But you can see the branches coming together. It's going to be a long time before you see, like, full image and stuff, obviously. Next one is called Bellatrix by Bella Filipina. And I do have a cover photo already. And mine is this that got peeled off. But this is what it looks like when it's done. This was my first, like, fancy lady cross stitch. And I got decent progress on this since you last seen it. This is where it is now. I'm really enjoying this one. Um, I put up more of the Krynik, which is a sparkly, if you can tell in the video. But I got her face all the way done. And I'm happy with how it turned out. It's kind of hard to do the skin in my opinion. There's so many like quarter, quarter stitches and half stitches and it's just hard to read the chart. But once I got it done, I was just glad it was over. <laughs> I only have a little bit more skin just down here. Maybe her other arm, I don't remember. And then the skin will be done, which will be a relief. But to get this, I added all the Krynik. If you can see the sparkly, I really like it. If I could, I would do the beads already as I go, but I don't have like a frame big enough so that I would, don't smash the beads or anything with the hoop. Whoops. And then the next one is called Cirque de Coeurs by Ink Circles. This one I've reached 50%, so I hope I can get this one done this year, but we'll have to see how it goes. I'm really enjoying this one. It's like easy on my mind for the most part because it's just one color. I'm using DMC 3808 and this is how big it's going to be. Sometimes I have to, like you do have to pay attention that you're not counting wrong and stuff more on this but besides that it's really easy so you don't have to change your color at all. The last whip I have to show you is called Mount Cabin Home from Hade and it's by Dominic Davison. I'm doing it on 18 count, 2 over 2. Or no, 2 over 1. But in my last video I talked about goals and I said I was going to do one project with the goal of doing 22,000 stitches in 2022. And that's this project. So I calculated how much I would have to get per month done on this, and it is 1,834 stitches per month. And so far I have, I have reached that for January and February. Um, usually in the beginning of the month I try to focus on it more until I reach the goal, and then once I reach the goal, if I'm not feeling like it, I'll usually stop working on it and start working on my other projects. But... I'm really enjoying this one and it's on 18 count which is for me the easiest like easiest to stitch on with the size of it and stuff it just results in really large finished projects <laughs> but this is where it is I'm working on I have one page complete I don't think it was completed last video I'll show you closer Um, yeah. And then I decided to, when I finish the page, to randomly decide which one I work on next. So it would have been this or this one. So I just entered into like a random number picker thing and it picked the bottom page. So that's the one I'm doing now. I feel like I'm close to halfway done with that page. Maybe more than halfway done. But yeah, I can't wait to get to other parts. As you can see, there's like antlers hanging on the wall. These orange colors over here 
is a tree and that's gonna show up down here as well and this is just wall but I'm enjoying this piece the reason I started it is because I saw Jemima the rocking st stitcher she was showing like patterns she has on her wish list and stuff and I saw this one so that's where I heard about it <laughs> so that's all I have for whips um, the next thing we're going to talk about is Stitchy Kindness because I have had a few Stitchy Kindness given to me <laughs> since the last video. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is, let me grab this one, whoops. The first one I'm going to show you is a project bag and it was stitched by my aunt. Her name is Daphne Chamberlain. She also has a floss tube and it's under that name if you want to find her. But let me take the project out of it. This is how it looks. It's sunflowers. And it's clear. Um, and then black. But she has an Instagram where she's selling these. And it's called Sewn. S-E-W-N by Daphne. It's all one word. I believe you just have to message her. Or comment on that. Instagram posts of the bag that you want But she just recently started so if you want to go check out her what she has available you should <laughs> The next one is so the next three things I want on giveaways, so I guess you could say I was a little bit lucky since my last video <laughs> um, The next one is also another Project bag so my first two ever like Project bags that you see everyone have. <laughs> uh, what is it called? Like fabric ones, not plastic or anything. This one is from Sycamore Stitches on Floss Tube, and I believe that's her Instagram name as well. She was doing a giveaway, and I won this bag. It's Christmas themed and uh, has scissors on the zipper. Um, but yeah, they're both super cute bags, and I really enjoy having them. In this, in this one, I keep um, the Christmas tree pattern that I just showed you guys, called Marion Bright. And then in this one, I keep my Sunflower one, which I'll just show you right now. Sunflower Cottage. I did work on this one, but it's very, very little, so I didn't bother to show it. But now I'm showing it, so here it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I messed up my counting somewhere over here. So my plan is to, or no, somewhere over here, my plan is to work this way down and then up. Hopefully I'll find the mistake. And hopefully I don't have to actually like take a bunch of stitches out to fix it. The next giveaway that I won is from Crafty Emily from Floss Tube, and that's with an IE at the end, not a Y. And when she was doing her Floss Mist videos around Christmas time, she was doing like a little giveaway each video, so I... I won one of those, and it's a keychain slash scissor fob, whatever you want to call it. It's a gnome, I believe, or an elf, <laughs> but she made it herself, so it has like beads and a cute hat with a bell, and I've just had it attached to my scissors. I have to make sure my cats don't get interested in this too much, <laughs> but it's been useful. It helps my scissors not fall off the couch, so that's nice. The last giveaway I've won is from Georgia Girl Stitching, and I won a pattern, and it is this. Yeah, it's from Barbara Ann Designs, Flowers from the Sea. It's a mermaid, and I do plan to stitch it at some point, but I don't know when I'll be starting it. So the next thing we're going to talk about is haul slash new starts because I've had a lot since like this is all still Christmas stuff I've received. I, re I was gifted like gift cards and stuff so I bought quite a few things. Okay, the first one is called Cat Face and it's by Fluffy Fuzzy Cross Stitch on Etsy. And this is a picture that resembles my cat Petrie as you'll see in the cover photo. 
You can't tell from this. I don't even know which way it goes, so we're just going to go with this way. But it's black and white, and it looks like my cat Petri, so I wanted to do it. I started this on December 30th, 2021. Next, we have Sleeping Cat Monochrome by Stitching Jewels on Etsy. This is like my third project I bought from her that's monochromatic. I finished one of them, it's the squirrel. This one I bought because it resembles my cat, Wally. And I really wanna like grab them and show you guys the cats so you can compare and contrast, but they're all sleeping. So I figured I'll just let them sleep instead of waking them up. I don't know which way this goes. I think it's the top, but doesn't matter yet because you can't tell. But it's monochromatic and it's not like full coverage at all. It's just the black stitches and that's it. I started this on December 7th. Um, the next pattern is called Brachiosaurus from Heaven and Earth Designs by David Penbound. And it's on 28 count, one over one. So originally I had started it over here, but realized I messed up. Basically, I started over here, and when I moved over here, I went down one stitch, so they're not lined up evenly. I tried to take them out, but the stitches are just so tiny that it was really hard. So then I just checked how much fabric I have actually on here, and it's still enough to restart, so I wouldn't have to. I could just cut it off later. So that's what I did, and it's very little, but it's better than nothing. So this pattern I started for my son, who is not born yet. <laughs> he will be here in less than two months, but we decided to go for dinosaur themed. So now I feel like starting all the dinosaur things. And if he grows up to not like dinosaurs, that's okay because my fiance loves them. So it'll be for either him or my son. The next one is called Autumn by my by Rhea Petit, Petit, I don't know if, how to say that. <laughs> From Heaven and Earth Designs. And this one is to resemble my cat Autumn because the title of that pattern is Autumn and that is her name. I just started this like a week ago and that's all I worked on this past week really, like after work and stuff. So yeah, it's already like 3% done. But I like the colors, it's a nice change. I don't really have a lot of orange patterns and there's a lot of orange in here. But this is like a paw. Or it is a paw, it's not like a paw. <laughs> yeah, the paw, that paw is complete. And then I couldn't, just, I couldn't decide what direction I wanted to go with it next, but wherever I feel like it, that's where we're gonna go with it. I just had this urge to get like patterns that Look like my cats, and I have three cats, so <laughs> Wally currently is in the lead. I have um, three patterns now that resemble Wally, and the other two cats have just one. I'm sorry. The next one is called Temperature Typography um, by Stitching Mommy on Etsy, and it's on 28 count, three over two. And if you've never seen or heard about these, um, it's based off of the temperature of where you live, or if you want to do it some other place, you can. But mine is based off of where I live. And I live in the desert, so it gets very hot. And on her Etsy, she has options for like, um, like a cold climate, hot climate, regular. And even her hottest climate chart only went up to like 110 degrees. And we have at least one day a year where it's like 120. So I messaged her if she could create like a custom temperature color chart thing for me and she was able to do that. So I appreciated her help with that. Um, but yeah, 
So when you see blues and purples, for most of you probably, you're probably thinking, oh, it's so cold there. But really, <laughs> the lowest is like 50 degrees. Maybe, yeah, probably. So these purple days, it's still only like 50, which is probably cold for a lot of us over here. But for many of you guys, it's like, that's summertime weather. <laughs> and then you see we got two greens and it's the lightest green on the bee. It was one day where it was like 93 degrees and I'm like, are you serious? It's only February. <laughs> but luckily it only lasted for like two days. Now we're back in the 70s for like maybe one more month and then we're gonna just go up from there. Um, the next one is called Snow Queen and it's Mirabilia. It's on 32 count. Twilight blue linen, and I'm doing this two over two. Oh yeah, the cover photo. I really like this one. My first Mirabilia. Um, one of my, or my favorite Christmas movie of all time is it's called Prancer. And uh, Reindeer obviously reminds me of that movie, so that's why I really like this one. And this is where I've gone to. Just show you it like this but just the part of the dress i haven't ordered the karnik or the beads yet because it's gonna be a while anyways but i really like this i can't wait to see more of it get completed and speaking of linen there's a couple more than this one but these are like my first time stitching on linen and so far i haven't had an issue with it i've noticed this one is more stiff and then the other ones I've worked on are looser, more less stiff. <laughs> um, next I started is called Dinosaurs by Green Terrace on Etsy and I'm stitching this 32 count top Lugana. This one is for my son. Um, yeah, this one is for my son. And I'm going to turn this one into like a um, birth sampler. It's not actually charted as a birth sampler. But I started it. I left extra space on the bottom to put his name and his weight and stuff like that. But this one's really cute. I have done some back stitching. And it's paper pattern, so I hurt my neck a little sometimes. <laughs> when I'm trying to look at the paper pattern and stuff. And the last new star is called Gathering Acorns by Cottage Garden Samplings. And I found out about this pattern because it's been getting posted a lot that Cottage Garden Samplings has a new series this year. And it was I really liked it. Their first one was a fox. So I started to look at all their other patterns that they have on one, two, three stitch, and I saw the squirrel and so I bought the squirrel. I'm stitching it on 32 count Murmur Lugana by Picture This Plus, two over two. This is the cover photo. It's still in the package, sorry. But my favorite animal for wild animals are squirrels. So I want to have like a collection of squirrel patterns completed someday. This would be my second one. This one's not the call for fabric, and it didn't look how I expected it to look, but it was still good. This is what I have done. Hopefully you can see that. So the bottom, it's like his foot down there, and then just his back and his body. But this one calls for one color of the Gentle Art Threads, and I don't have anything except DMC. And when I went to go look for it, it was out of stock, and I really didn't want to wait, so I substituted it with the DMC color. So the Gentle Arts color they call for is called Maple Syrup, but I'm using DMC 3860. And yeah, it's turning out fine. So those are all my new starts. I'm sorry, I think uh, my camera has been shaking this whole time. Hopefully it doesn't bug you. I'll try to not touch the table anymore. I just have a few more. Oh, one more start. This one is called 
This one is from Mill Hill Beads. And it's called Country Lane. Or no, it's called Autumn Swing. <laughs> this is how it's going to look when it's done. And it just reminds me of my childhood because I used to have a um, tire swing on a tree. <laughs> you can't really tell much from what I've done. I believe it goes this way, but this is what I have done. But I really do, I really do like to work on these Mill Hill kits, preferably like one at a time. But yeah, this would be my second Mill Hill ever. The first one was a squirrel. Unfortunately, my cat's got to it. It's still in one piece, but it's a little bit bit and stuff. I don't know if I'd ever want to redo it though. But I learned my lesson, it needs to be where the cats can't reach it. <laughs> All right, the rest is haul. So with my gift cards I received for Christmas, I bought the rest of the carnage that I need for my Bella Filipina. And this is my first time sitting with Karnik. And I learned right away that it is very hard to get the thread onto your needle. So like that day or the next day, I went to Michael's and bought a needle threader and that helped me with that problem. The next thing I bought is the pattern I'd mentioned a little while ago called the Fox by Cottage Garden Samplings. And I have seen all their their newest releases. So far, none of them have called to me. I don't, I'm not even a Fox person. I kind of just wanted to join in on it. <laughs> because it, it's still cute, obviously. It's a nice winter decoration. But so far, I don't plan on buying more unless they any future ones I really like. And I did buy, I don't think I have it with me, but I did buy a called for one of the called for flosses, and it's the orange one. The rest are the colors I already have. But since I wasn't starting this one, I was able to wait for the call for floss. And then another pattern, which I really want to start, but I have to get the fabric still, is this, and it's by Hello from Liz, Massey, Liz Matthews. And I just really like this quote. It's from a song that I know of. I know a lot of people, there's a lot of people who didn't realize it's from a song. I don't know if she intended it to be from a song, but this would be dedicated to me and my fiance, if you weren't already assuming that. <laughs> oh yeah, another pattern I bought. <laughs> See, this is another one, Wally. He gets the third pattern dedicated to him because he's gray and this cat is gray, so that means it is my cat. <laughs> This is a Mill Hill Beads kit. I will be working on this some at some point. Maybe I'll try to get done before Christmas. I don't know. And I also bought all the beads for my Bella Filipina. And I really want to like put them on because they all look so pretty. I'm sorry, I'm not going to take them out and show you guys, but it's going to be at the end when all the string is on already. And then I bought this fabric for the fox. I don't believe it's called for because that was out of stock everywhere. But I got one that's close enough, so it works for me. So the last thing I have to show you for haul is something that I heard. I heard about it from Steph from Just Keep Stitching. And it is called Tacky Bill. Or talk. It's either Tacky Bill or Tacky Bob. Something like that. Um, I'll put it on the screen if I can remember it later. But basically it helps you when you're beading your projects. Because you have these tiny little beads and you don't want to lose them and stuff. So let me open this. This is what it comes in. At least mine. I bought mine off of yarntree.com. And this is what it is. It looks like it's just some empty container. <laughs> but it's actually sticky. You put your beads on here and they don't roll around. I haven't been able to use it yet because I'm not beading my projects yet. So I'm, yeah. <laughs> but this will be very useful because when I'm stitching, 
or when I do put beads on my projects, I'm leaning, sitting back in my couch. I literally put a couple beads right here. <laughs> and then I'll pick at it. And then hopefully I don't have to go chase after the cats or anything because then I'm going to lose them. But now I don't have to do that anymore. So yeah, I can't wait to use this. I think that's it for this video. I kind of have a lot, a lot more than usual to show you guys. Probably won't be that many, that much stuff for a long time. Maybe until next Christmas. <laughs> um, I don't know when my next video is going to be. I want to be able to say end of March. But if you guys remember, I t mentioned in my last video that I'm pregnant and expecting a baby soon. So I don't know how I'm going to feel or if the baby's going to come before then. So I do want to come back, obviously, to film more, film more videos. But for now... You guys can follow my Instagram. It's the same as my YouTube, Casey Stitches. Um, but yeah, I do plan to continue Flosto, but I just don't know when or what the frequency will be for the for, for the near future. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye.